and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It's Thursday, April 14th, 2022, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for just a bit later this morning. Uh, let's see, currently we've got futures, um, well, mostly flat. Uh, Dow futures are up just a little bit, uh, up 51 points. S&P 500 futures down two. NASDAQ futures down one and a half. But we do still have a couple hours to go till we get to the opening bell. So uh, anything could still happen, but it does look like it's going to be relatively flat open. Crude oil price is currently down a buck 60. Uh, that's about a buck, or excuse me, one and a half percent down to uh, 102, um, about 160 per barrel. The uh, 10 year treasury yield 2.67%, that's down a couple basis points this morning. Both of the key inflation reports now are in our rear view mirror. We've had the March CPI and March PPI reports out the last two days, uh, but we still do have some big economic reports out this morning. Of course, initial jobless claims will be out in a bit. Um, we've got um, March retail sales um, and they're expected to pick up a little bit. I'll go over those numbers in just a minute and uh, the consumer sentiment numbers also coming out. And they have been dropping for the past 12, 13 months. They're expected to drop again. And that's a leading indicator of a potential recession. So um, watching that number pretty closely too, and I'm sure the market will be looking at it as well. Um, let's see, let me go ahead and go through the agenda with you. So we're going to start out today with the daily market recap, then we'll get into talking technically. Break it down. I'm going to look at the consumer staples group. Yesterday in my Trading Places live show over at earningsbeats.com, I uh, took a look at all of the industry groups within consumer discretionary. So I'm going to do the same thing today with consumer staples and just show you what's going on there. Then we'll get into earnings spotlight. We'll wrap the show up with the three you must see. <clears throat> These will be three familiar stocks. Very aggressive stocks I gave on the last show here at Stock Chart. So uh, I want to just follow up with those same three again, show you what's uh, transpired there. Um, before we get into any of that, though, let me take you over to Earnings Beats. Uh, those of you that are new to Earnings Beats, go to earningsbeats.com and scroll down. We have a free newsletter. We'd love to have you join. No credit card required. You can unsubscribe at any time. It's a three times a week newsletter published on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, normally they're out around the newsletters out about eight 30 in the morning. So, uh, usually gives you some time to digest it before the market opens. It's very, very quick read. Normally just a couple of paragraphs in a chart, um, just going over something that's kind of important to us, whether it's earnings gaps, relative strength, whatever. Um, but all you need uh, to do is sign up with your name and email address. Again, no credit card required. It's always free. We will not provide any of your information to, to outside third parties. So you don't have to worry about that. We'll maintain your privacy. Anyhow, I think you'll enjoy the newsletter. So sign up uh, if you'd like. Also, one last thing I'll mention about the newsletters. We have a lot of free events. Uh, we got another one coming up next week. And, uh, you know, if you're, you know, you like some of these educational events, if you like my shows, I think you'll like the events that we do. Uh, we reach out to everyone on our Earnings Beats Digest letter, though. We always send out room instructions when we have a free event. So that's another reason to be on here if you want to uh, attend some of those events. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and take a look now at the daily market recap. The uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average up 344 points on Wednesday. S&P 500 was up 49. NASDAQ up 272. Mid caps up 41, small caps up 21. Everything looking good. NASDAQ the winner on a relative basis. Uh, it was up more than 2%. So that did uh, more than double the Dow um, and it outperformed the other indices as well. From a sector perspective, discretionary leading up 2.5%. Technology next, 1.6%. Then we had energy and materials, both up about 1.5%. So a pretty strong day there. The only group really that was down, it wasn't down much, was utilities. So you can see overall, Nice, uh, pretty nice day on Wednesday. 10-year Treasury yield um, this morning. Uh, well, it closed yesterday at uh, 2.69. I said earlier it was down a little over a basis point, close to a couple basis points. But <clears throat> the overall trend here clearly has been higher. Um, that hasn't really helped the financials. As you can see, financials on a relative basis going down. Talked about this a bunch, but 
for me, it's just that rates are going up for all the wrong reasons. And we've talked about a couple of things. Number one, obviously inflation. Um, if you're holding bonds, you, you want to have a higher return if inflation um, is expected. And to be quite honest, I don't want to be in a bond that's yielding two or three percent if uh, inflation's at six percent. That makes no sense whatsoever. So that's part of what's going on is folks are bailing because of inflation. That sends the yield higher. Um, also, if you think there's going to be a recession, you may not uh, be wanting to get into uh, the bonds or stocks for that matter. Um, so, you know, both of those things, I think, are, are um, um, certainly adding to some of the, the selling pressure there. But let's don't forget, the Fed has announced that they're going to be reducing their balance sheet. They're going to be selling. So, you know, the market has had the benefit of the Fed buying bonds to keep the rates lower. But as they exit, they're going to actually be inflating the yield. They're going to be selling and the yield's going to be going up as a result of that. So we've got to be not only worried about the Fed, but we also have to be worried about front runners, everybody who's front running the Fed and selling because they know the Fed's going to be selling. So all of that could be playing into this. Obviously, it's not encouraging folks to jump into financials on a relative basis, though. So the one thing I can tell you that it's not is that we are not soaring because of an expected explosion in the economy. Um, quite the contrary. I personally believe we're going to have a recession or at least the threat of one. And that is going to uh, probably keep a lid on equity prices as a result. All right, um, moving on, let's do talking technically next. And here, uh, well, first of all, the S&P 500, you can see yesterday, pretty nice day, nice hollow candle, mostly buying throughout the day. That's always a good day. Um, I don't usually have anything negative to say about that, except if the leadership is poor. But the leadership yesterday was fine. We talked about it, consumer discretionary, technology. When those two groups are at the top and you have this kind of a candle, that's awesome. Now, you need it for more than one day. You know, one day is nice, but that doesn't make a trend. We've been going down for a while. And down here at the bottom, I actually have a relative ratio of consumer staples to the S&P 500. And since the beginning of December, late November, look at what consumer staples have been doing. Been going straight up. We had a little bit of a you know, pullback. Most of it right here was during option expiration week. So why would that happen? Well, if consumer staples have been strong, anybody who's in the call world, probably there's, my guess would be more um, in the money calls than puts. So as a result, we would see or expect to see maybe the XLP take a little bit of a dip there. So that week was not a good week. But other than that, I mean, for the most part, we've been going straight up on a relative basis. Now, when you look at the chart of the S&P 500, the chart of the S&P 500 has been down since the beginning of the year. So in order to lead, you don't necessarily have to go up. You just have to be down less than the S&P 500. Hopefully that makes sense. That's, uh, that, again, that's just relative strength. Um, so I thought maybe what we would do is, um, you know, when you look at this, and you, this is one way of looking at relative strength. The XLP has been outperforming and it just set a new high relative to the S&P 500. So clearly it's an outperformer. Another way to look at this is using the sector summary at stock charts. And when you pull up the sector summary, uh, let me show you how you get here first. So if you're unfamiliar with stock charts, if you're over here on the left side, member tools, if you're on your dashboard and you scroll down, under summary pages is sector summary. So if you click on that, the um, default is intraday. So you can see discretionary and technology. That's what I talked about at the open of the show. These are the two that we're leading. If we go to one week, you can see things change a little bit. Energy and material still doing well, but consumer staples is now one of those top three. These are the only three that have gained more than 1% over the last week. None of them are aggressive areas of the market. And while you see consumer discretionary here next, it's below consumer staples, which is not a good thing. And then you go down the bottom, you got technology, communication services, two aggressive groups. So over the past week, you know, I said one day doesn't make a trend. So yesterday was good, you know, golf clap. Um, but we need more than that. We need more than the day. We need to really get things going and show extended period of leadership from uh, communication services, technology, uh, consumer discretionary, financials, industrials. That's where we want to see strength over a period of time. Now let's stretch this out to a month. 
because over the last month, the top three consumer staples and utilities, two defensive groups are up there. Again, consumer discretionary not doing badly, but it's trailing consumer staples. Down at the bottom, industrials, financials, technology, and then here, communication services. So four of the five bottom groups were aggressive groups. The last month has not been good. 2022, you can do year to date in here. Energy, utilities, consumer staples, healthcare. Where's technology and where's consumer discretionary? Oh, down here at the bottom and look how far they've been lagging year to date. So this is what we, this is where we need to see leadership from te technology and consumer discretionary over three or four month periods, not over one day. So this needs to change before I'm gonna grow bullish again in the near term. And right now it's just, it's not. Um, you know, one of my sustainability ratios I talk about all the time um, is the XLY, XLP. So I like to see consumer discretionary outperform consumer staples. And it's a really simple reason why. This is a 10 year chart. So I think everyone can agree that this is trending higher over the last 10 years. <clears throat> but I think everyone also can agree over the intermediate term, last four months, four or five months, we're going straight down. And the reason this is important down at the bottom here, I've got correlation. And while it's all over the place, up and down, I mean, you're not going to correlate every single day. So it's connecting these correlations on a daily basis. Um, you can see that most of the readings are in positive territory. And in fact, uh, most of the readings are above 0 0.5. And how many are below minus 0 0.5? Almost none. Very few compared to what's above. So you can see the tight correlation that exists between the relationship from XLY to XLP and the direction of the S&P 500. So when we're going up on the XLY, XLP, we're generally going up in the S&P 500, but the opposite is true. When they're going down, they tend to go down together. <clears throat> well, I want you to take a look at where we're going right now. I mean, the XLY, XLP is not far from breaking down to a new low here in 2022. <clears throat> if that happens, the S&P 500 is likely going lower. And this is much closer to a breakdown than the S&P 500. So we're not seeing any kind of major divergence develop at this point. That's probably, yeah, that's pretty, pretty much what I wanted to go over for talking technically. So we definitely, we just want to see this XLY, XLP ratio um, begin to turn more bullish and turn higher. And we're just not seeing that right now. Okay, so let's move on to break it down. And so in break it down, what I want to do is go through these consumer staples groups with you. Um, so let me, uh, we're going to start off with the food retailers and wholesalers. This is the DJ USFD. Um, when I showed consumer discretionary industry groups in my show yesterday over at uh, earningsbeats.com, um, every one of the groups, the best let me show you the best group out of 20 or 21 industry groups. The best group was the auto group. And this is what it looked like. Uh, you can see clearly that the auto group's downtrending, lower highs, lower lows. This was the best looking chart in the consumer discretionary sector. The best looking industry group chart. So as we go back over here now and look at the Staples, I want you to look at the configuration of these charts. So here's food retailers, definitely one of the strongest, if not the strongest. Higher highs, higher lows. I mean, we're almost in a stealth move to the upside right now. This is where the money is rotating. If you're trying to trade technology and you're trying to trade consumer discretionary internet stocks and you're spinning your wheels, you're in the wrong group. These are, those groups are not trending higher. Now, if you're trying to short, you probably have much better opportunity because those groups have been going lower for the most part this year. But if you're trying to go long and you're treating this market the same as it was six months ago, the problem is you're treating this market the same as it was six months ago. It's not the same market. We continue to trend lower in the S&P 500. We continue to see rotation that does not benefit these aggressive groups. So if you're on the long side, you're much better off looking at groups like food retailers and wholesalers. This is where you're going to find uptrending stocks. 
Um, and that'll change. But for now, if you're a short-term trader, go with what's working. All right, next up. Uh, this is the food products group. I mean, already seen two very, very strong groups versus what you looked at with the autos. And the autos, like I said, that was the best group in the uh, consumer discretionary area. Here in Staples, you've got some winners. Food products looks great. Um, the Brewers. No, if you're a baseball fan, I'm not talking about Milwaukee. Um, I'm talking about the Brewers. And the Brewers here. Now, this group has actually improved at Scooter. You look at this chart and you're like, My, why? Well, the interesting part about Scooter scores, and I talk about this all the time, is the Scooters only go back. The one, one drawback I have from using Scooters is that there's nothing, there's no consideration for how um, an asset class or a stock has traded over the past year. Everything in the formula only goes back to about five months. So as long as you've done okay for the last five months, your scooter score is going to be okay. Now we've been mostly flat. So among industry groups, the brewers have about a 50 scooter rating right now, but you can see why. I mean, it's it, over the last five months, it hasn't been that bad. Market's been going down and the brewers have been going sideways. So that's been, you know, not bad action. So again, scooter scores, you got to be a little careful. Um, and for those, again, that don't understand scooters, that's an acronym, SCTR. It stands for Stock Charts Technical Rank. Um, I would just say, go over here to the search if you want to learn more about it and just type in SCTR or Stock Charts Technical Rank and go into Chart School and pull up the article. Um, it was developed by John Murphy. I, I think it's a brilliant uh, way of looking. It's a different way of looking at relative strength. Um, but again, the one downside is that it only goes back about five or six months. All right, next up, uh, personal products. Let's see what this one looks like. All right, this one does not look as good. This group has been trending lower, but it has for the last month or so, uh, looks like probably been leading the S&P 500 back to the upside. And actually down at the bottom, I do have these relative charts. There's that relative strength. So this one, and I'm going in, uh, um, um, actually, I'm not going in any particular order. So we'll keep rolling. This one is actually, this is the worst performing group, according to the scooter, uh, personal products. Next up, let's look at tobacco. All right, <clears throat> excuse me, tobacco. Um, yeah, we had a rough period here, end of February into early March, but now it's coming back. We're not that far from breaking out to a, a new high. And you can see the relative strength. We went straight up at the beginning of this year, pulled back during the month of March, and now we're moving back up again, money rotating back into tobacco. Next up, um, the drug retailers. This was a group that I've been talking about where we've been right up against major resistance. Yesterday, it looked like we had a breakout. We came back down. I think we're just simply consolidating above the 20-day. I think this group's going to break out. Um, on a relative basis, look at the relative strength. Again, consumer staple group. Um, how about distillers and vintners? Again, look at the rally. Relative strength, not doing that much all of a sudden in April. We're heading into earnings. This is when, this is when the aggressive groups normally shine. It's the two or three, four weeks leading up to earnings season. And we're not seeing it. Got to, I, I don't, hey, I'm bullish. I think everybody who follows me knows that long term, I'm bullish. I believe we're going really high. And I think over the, you know, balance of the year, like fourth quarter of this year, in the next year, I think the market's going to explode because I don't think inflation is going to be a problem. I think rates come back down, growth stocks take off. I think it's going to be a huge win if you're on the long side. I mean, like really big. I think we're going to have a really big year. I think starting in maybe October, or November this year, depending on how bad things get this year, if things are really bad, I think next year is going to be an explosion to the upside. If we consolidate, I think we'll go up. It'll be a nice year. I don't know that it'll be massive, but I think it depends on how far we drop first. Anyway, um, the distillers and vendors, nice move, relative strength, strong. Got two more of these. Uh, first is non-durable household products. And again, starting the year, look at that strength. Look at the relative strength. And we pulled back for a couple months and now we're going back up again. Nice relative strength. Again, money rotating into another 
consumer staples industry group. Last one I have for you is soft drinks. DJ USSD breaking out to a new high. Relative strength, very strong. So do you see the difference between the money in consumer stocks? Consumer spending makes up two thirds of our GDP. You need to pay attention to what's going on in the consumer stocks. And while I think it's great that consumer staples are going higher, I don't think it's great that they're outperforming consumer uh, discretionary. And that is or continues to be one of the big problems for the stock market right now. All right, let's talk a little bit about earnings. Um, now, I didn't see the actual earnings reports this morning that came out. They've come out recently. Uh, but I, I'll talk a little bit about their charts and, and their reactions because I, I did look at pre-market prices. There hasn't been a whole lot of movement in these stocks, but they, they have moved a little bit. So let's uh, go over the ones I have here. So UNH, I said going in, this is one of the strongest earnings reports um, or one of the strongest charts heading into their earnings. And if we pull this up on a relative basis, first of all, the AD line just moved to a new 52-week high. We're breaking out. We're in the healthcare, which is a defensive sector. Um, healthcare providers, look at the, the group going up and breaking out. UNH is a leader among the healthcare providers. That's what this relative strength tells us. And then you've got health, healthcare providers breaking out the new highs versus the S&P. This is the poster child of what you want in your portfolio, a leading stock in a leading industry group. So on any weakness, I'd be a buyer of UNH. 20-day test, I, that would be where I would be a buyer. So if earnings come out and we see a little bit of uh, selling on news, sometimes you get the buying on rumor, which we've had here, they may come out with great numbers and still sell off. And if they sold off and got back down to about 520, I'd be a buyer. If they got down anywhere close to 500 near the 50 day, I'd add, I'd add to my position. I really like UNH. This is one of my favorite stocks in the market right now. Um, Wells Fargo. Now Wells Fargo, and by the way, UNH was up about a half percent pre-market. Um, Wells Fargo down 3% in pre-market. And I did see headlines that they missed on their revenues. I didn't see the numbers, but I saw they missed on their revenues and that they're expecting to see an increase in their credit losses. And the stock was down 3%. Now, this one doesn't look great, but when you look at it relative to the banks, this is one of your leaders in the banks and they're coming out missing their revenues and issuing a little bit of caution in their guidance with credit losses. If, is that the best your best can do? That's what they come up with. We already saw JP Morgan yesterday miss on their earnings. I mean, no wonder the banks are struggling. Look at the relative strength in banks, 52 week low. Now we're finding out why this was one of the best banks going in and they missed on their revenues. So anyway, uh, we'll keep moving on. Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs. So Morgan Stanley um, is up 2.3% pre-market. Goldman Sachs is up 1.8. So they're both up slightly, but they're also both in downtrends. And being up 1% or 2% isn't going to get me too excited based on this chart. So I would be careful on the gap ups for both of these. Citigroup, this is one of the worst banks. Um, and they were down, but only down 0.3%. Um, so a fraction. But look at the relative weakness right here. You know, I just showed you the Wells Fargo 52-week high versus banks. Here's the other side, Citigroup 52-week low versus the bank index. So if we pulled up a Wells Fargo chart versus Citigroup, you can imagine what it's going to look like. Wells Fargo has been going straight up. So straight up, looking pretty good there. All right, as far as the other earnings, not really a whole lot more to talk about there. I mean, uh, USB up 1.28% pre-market. PNC, I wasn't getting anything on. Let's see if there's any change in PNC. I had it flat. Yeah, it's still showing flat right now. Um, STT, this is uh, State Street, up 2.5%. That's not bad. Ally, A-L-L-Y, Ally Financial, showing nothing. Let me get the latest on the others I gave you. UNH, uh, up 0.19%, really flat. Uh, WFC, Wells Fargo, there's your down 3.69% down to 46.75. Morgan Stanley up 1.68%. So that was down from where it was earlier. 
Goldman Sachs, 1.45 percent. So that's down from where it was. And last one we'll do a city. Uh, city actually up 2.4 percent, but it's probably one of the sell on rumor, buy on news stories. Anything up near that 20 day, I would be out of Citigroup. I mean, it, it would have to show me some relative strength over a period of time. I would have no interest in trying to hold that through a key moving average. So from where it looks to be, you know, maybe opening today, 5136, you got maybe another buck and a half to two bucks to get up to that 20 day moving average. So got a little room to the upside, but I'd be careful in Citigroup. I don't like owning stocks that are fit at 52 week relative lows. You will almost never see me buy a stock that is showing that kind of relative weakness. Wall Street screaming at us, don't buy this. That's what that chart tells me. Don't buy this stock. So do with it what you want, but uh, I, don't, I don't like stocks that are downtrending in terms of relative strength. All right, uh, last thing um, we're gonna do is the three you must see. And two days ago, I'm gonna give you these stocks that I showed you a couple of days ago. They were, I said they were aggressive stocks. Um, first one here, CTRM had just broken above what looked to me like an uptrend and an ascending triangle. Um, and so that actually measured, I don't know if I talked about the measurement, but the measurements would be up to about 260. Uh, yesterday's high got to 233. So it's already made a pretty good move over the last couple of days. But with that measurement at up at 260, you can see the overhead resistance near 275. Anything up near that level, if you did uh, take a shot at this, if it gets up there, uh, I would be taking profits. Honestly, in two days, it's already up, what, 12%. Um, I, I'd probably be taking something off the table as it moves up. Um, these small stocks can reverse very, very quickly. So you do need to be disciplined about taking profits when you, uh, when you have them. The uh, second stock that I mentioned the other day was GoGo, and it's one I own. This is one of the, the uh, short squeeze stocks at um, earnings beats, we keep a short squeeze chart list. And this I believe is the third or fourth highest shorted stock on our chart list. Um, I wanna say their short percentage of float is 40%. That means of all the shares that are available out there, 40% of them have been borrowed by short sellers. So if there's any good news and you start buying, you can have buyers tripping over each other. And that's what creates a short squeeze. GoGo -Go is looking like it wants to GoGo. -Go. I mean, this thing um, came out a little over a week ago, announced they were being added to the uh, S&P 600 small cap index and got the gap up. And then it was wild, went down $5 or close to it, and then came right back up. And now it broke into a new high. Volume's been pretty strong. Watch out. I mean, this one is one that absolutely has many of the ingredients necessary for a powerful short squeeze to the upside. So like I said, I own it, I'm in it. It's hard to tell when to get out of these. You just have to say, listen, be disciplined, take some off the table as it goes up. Um, and that's probably going to be my strategy to get out of this one. The last one is another one that also was added to the S&P 600 small cap index. It got the gap up as well. And it came all the way back down. I was mentioning it was down near this support level. Yesterday, it started to turn back to the upside. So this is another one that I've gotten into. Um, I, clearly to the downside, if we take out the recent lows, I'm going to be out. I'll just get my, my stop triggered. But this is one that could rally here over the next few days. Might go all the way back up that 38, 39 level. Uh, will be very interesting to see. Anyway, that's it for me today. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, be sure to join me next week on Monday over at earningsbeats.com for the next earnings or for the next Trading Places Live. Also a reminder, Tomorrow, Friday, April 15th is Good Friday. Stock market, bond market closed. So um, everybody have a great extended weekend. Be safe out there this weekend, and we'll see you next week over at earningsbeats.com for your next Trading Places Live. Take care. Happy trading, everybody. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.